Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Shelley Christensen, the Senior Director of Faith, Inclusion, and Belonging at Respectability. I'm also the co-founder of Jewish Disability Awareness, Acceptance, and Inclusion Month. Living with ADHD, I have come to appreciate how much my neurodiversity is a positive force in my life. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a white woman with curly brown hair, and I'm wearing blue glasses, a black sweater over a royal blue top. And behind me are several photographs of flowers and a tall vase with six red Gerbera daisies sitting on a bookcase. Dr. Abraham Joshua Heschel, may his memory be for blessing, wrote in his book, The Sabbath, creation, we are taught, is not an act that happened once upon a time, once and forever. The act of bringing the world into existence is a continuous process. As we recognize the 15th anniversary of JDAME, we pause briefly to recognize the inclusive practices that are now part of the Jewish community. Every February, Jewish organizations and communities, including synagogues, schools, community centers, and federations, have responded to the call to create a world where disabled Jews and those who love us are welcomed and included. Still, to borrow from Heschel, we must allow the process to continue to develop beyond inclusion until finally all people who want access to the full scope of Jewish life belong. Lauren Applebaum is joining me today to co-moderate our panel. Hi, Lauren. Thank you so much, Shelley. Um, as Shelley said, my name is Lauren Applebaum and I am Respectability's Senior Vice President of Entertainment and News Media. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a white woman with shoulder length brown hair, wearing a navy blue shirt, and behind me is a teal green couch um, and cabinet. As an individual with an acquired non-apparent disability, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, I work at the intersection of disability, employment, and the entertainment industry. I oversee our content advisement work and trainings to ensure authentic representation of disability, as well as building the disability community within the entertainment industry through our various labs. This work helps increase diverse and authentic representation of disabled people on screen, leading to systemic change and how society views and values disabled individuals. Based on a true story, 13 is a short film about a mother fighting to have a bat mitzvah for her disabled and terminally ill daughter in a synagogue that refuses to break from tradition. During today's virtual event, we'll explore the intersections of ableism and anti-Semitism and the ongoing impact in Jewish communities hearing from members of the team behind the making of 13. Now let's introduce the panelists. Allison Norlian is a three-time Emmy-nominated award-winning journalist with a decade of experience in the media. She is the co-founder of Birdmine, a production company that focuses on elevating underrepresented populations' voices. Through Birdmine, she hopes to tell unheard essential stories about communities who are often left behind in mainstream media and society. Allison is the writer and co-director of 13. Now we can invite uh, Naomi and Judith to also turn their camera on. Uh, for Naomi, after falling in love with acting in school musicals, Naomi Rubin began her professional acting career in 2018 when she was cast in a recurring co-star role as Noel on seasons two and three of the Netflix original series, Atypical. In addition, Naomi played Audrey in the 2019 Disney pilot, The A-Girl, as well as appearing in a long form web commercial for an international online retailer and Investigation Discoveries, A Stranger Among Us. An LA native who began performing at the age of eight, Naomi is on the autism spectrum and credits her neurodiverse thinking for the ability to imagine characters and animate their emotional universe. She's unafraid of exploring themes of vulnerability and awkwardness in her work and is drawn to characters in extreme circumstances. When she's not acting or singing, Naomi can be found volunteering with rescue cats at Perry's place, 
obsessing over the Marvel Universe and Broadway musicals, and championing social justice. After spending untold hours in Video Village as the parent of a young actor, Judith was inspired to switch hats after 20 years as a mom and executive coach. She recently produced two short films for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, Reaching Athena and Leap of Love, both of which centered on themes of both external and internalized ableism. Judith is a passionate advocate for autism inclusion and acceptance in the performing arts, as well as Jewish communal life. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Allison, 13 is, based, hi. <laughs> 13 is based on your family's experience of your sister's bat mitzvah. How did you weave your personal experiences into the narrative of the film? Um, well, <laughs> I have thought about my sister's bat mitzvah really since it happened over two decades ago. Um, you know, my sister's 40 now, so this ha obviously happened when she was 13. Um, and it was really one of my earliest examples of understanding that a person doesn't need to accept the status quo and can speak up to make change and improve their reality. So it's an important lesson that I wanted to share, um, which is ultimately why I decided to write 13. Uh, 13 script went through many drafts, as I would argue most screenplays go through. Um, when I first wrote this short film, it was very identical to the actual experience. Um, but after sharing it with fellow screenwriters, including my husband, who's um, a phenomenal screenwriter, I realized that I needed to make some changes in order to what I guess we call up the stakes, <laughs> um, you know, make it really interesting to the viewer. And what resulted was the narrative was 13, um, a film that's inspired by my life, but not identical. And, um, but that I hope still honors my, my mom and sister and their story. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much. So this film explores a lot of fun themes, um, including what it means to be disabled in Jewish spaces. Naomi, as the lead playing Yael, did you draw upon any of your personal experiences when playing this part? So I, I drew on a lot of parts of my own life um, and um, growing up, uh, my family and I went to a Jewish family camp that was created specifically for families with kids of all kind of disabilities. Um, and amongst, amongst those uh, kids and, and people were nonverbal people and people who communicated in different ways. And um, so it was also in a Jewish setting. So being able to draw from those memories was really helpful. And I also, um, Allison uh, shared uh, videos of of Becky. Um, so that was also uh, what I, uh, that was also inspiration that I used for Yael. Thank you. Judith, hi. I'm going to stay on this topic. Um, what insights on the intersection of disability and Jewish life do you hope our community will come away with after watching this film? Well, I hope that we all see how far we've come. So this story takes place, you know, about 20, you know, over 20 years ago. And I, I hope that um, in Jewish communal life that we've all had the experience of seeing inclusion and seeing a variety of different kinds of name its vote um, done in a lot of different ways. But, but the other thing I hope that people see is this vital connection between life cycle events and Jewish identity and how incredibly important it is both for the participant and the family to have access and to have inclusion in Jewish life cycle events. It's, it's how we identify as Jews. It's how we identify as Jewish parents or siblings. Um, and it's how we see ourselves. So I think the, the, the film beautifully shows you can really see in, in Rena Strober's remarkable portrayal of um, the mother, Leah, in the film, 
like how, like how much this means to her and her identity and who she is. And you can see what it means to Yael also. You see um, how important it is to be a part. So I think I think the film draws those um, connections really beautifully, and I hope people feel that and see it. Mm, thank you. I love what you just said about how you can see it in Yael. Um, and and Naomi, one of the things that I really loved while watching this film was, you know, yes, you are playing someone who is nonverbal, um, and so you have to really draw upon a lot of. Uh, other acting chops and such and being able to see and like your facial movements and reactions and such to be able to tell a story of what Yael is going through um, without verbally saying it and so you know you've you've had a number of credits to your name as we mentioned before from Atypical to the A-Girl to As We See It um, you know can you share a little bit more about kind of what sparked your interest in acting um, and desires to play these types of roles? Um, so when I was really, really young, I loved, I loved watching movies. I still love watching movies and theater. Um, uh, but I like would spend a lot of my time just sort of going around the house and pretending and, and stuff like so much so that sometimes I would just put on costumes. Like there was like a period of time, I think it was in kindergarten when I would like when I was like at home, like putting on like the uh, like the Judy Garland Dorothy costume and like just acting out the whole movie around the house, um, many films. Around the house. <laughs> well, I've that's the one I that's the one I remember the most. Okay, okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, so I love just pretending and playing a lot, um, and so in fourth grade. Um, I was presented with an opportunity to uh, participate in uh, my elementary school's production of Willy Wonka Jr. And I loved Willy Wonka. And I auditioned for Baruch Assault because I loved Baruch Assault. I still kind of do, um, which is a controversial opinion. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, and I didn't get the part, but I still got to be in the show because I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll still do it because it means I don't have to do homework as much. Um, and I ended up loving it. And um, I've, I've been doing, like, I've been doing school plays and, and such ever since. And then 2018 came around and it was like, like, oh, hey, here's this new thing that's fallen into your lap. And it's like, Yes. <laughs> Excellent. It's, it's great to be able to see you making a career of it. Definitely. I, lo I love how you just got into roles and, and acted out entire films. I love that. So let's, uh, let's stick with you for, for a minute, Naomi, and talk about how does how does your neurodiverse thinking and, and way of being, um, how does that empower you for your acting career? And, and along with that, I'm just curious, how did you, how did that help you prepare or how did you prepare for the role? Of uh, the uh, so I, as an actor, um, on the autism spectrum, I kind of have like a really like active and vivid imagination, which sort of allows me to like imagine myself in the shoes of other characters that that I'm playing. And I'm sort of always having like, I'm sort of always creating stories in my head um which and I'm able to also like hyper focus on something which is really helpful for when I'm practicing like text work or like focusing on like staying with the the actor that I'm playing across from and being able to um put myself in the mindset of someone who doesn't communicate the way that I communicate and someone who is nonverbal 
it was a really fun challenge to kind of put myself in in that um in those shoes and but also wanting to honor um who like who I was playing and being able to do that was was something that I really enjoyed and also just being able to work with Allison was amazing so that's great you just captured that essence of this of this young woman this 13 year old girl and how Judaism is so important in her life that was so I was, I just thought it was so beautiful shifting gears um Allison you know I, I've had the opportunity to kind of follow as you've been creating this project, you know, from an idea to now uh, a finished product. Um, and in advertising the creation of the film when you were, you know, trying to crowdfund, you wrote, um, during a time when anti-Semitism is raging and disability stories are few and far between, 13 puts Judaism and disability front and center with a heartfelt story based on the writer's life. So with anti-Semitism in the U.S. on the rise for the past decades, um, why is it so important to make films that feature authentic Jewish characters, including those who are disabled? Yeah, I think that I'm unmuted, right? Yeah, okay. Um, I think that's a great uh, question, Lauren. And um, I think that when I think of advocacy, I think there are um, you know two primary forms of advocacy. You have overt advocacy and you have subtle advocacy. And while I often am very overt in uh, how I speak about disability and Jewish inclusion, I also try to spread awareness, I think, subtly. And uh, I think that that's what 13 does. Um, when you watch 13, you aren't listening to someone explain in a speech or post about why you should care about these two communities. You're just sort of immersed into the world, you're immersed into Jewish life um, and disability and in what I hope is normalizing both of those things. I think that more filmmakers, they need to do this. They need to show authentic Jewish and disability life and culture. Um, so both don't seem so foreign, if you will, um, in, for those who are not in these respective communities. So. I think subtle advocacy, like creating films featuring authentic Jewish and disabled characters, it helps quote unquote normalize um, our realities in this world. And Lauren, as you said, anti-Semitism has been raging for the last few years. Um, I would argue even more as of late. And I hope people who see 13 realize the beauty of Jewish life and disability culture. And I hope it helps improve the realities that these two communities face, um, even if it's just changing one heart and one mind, so. Thank you. It really, it's so important um, to recognize that people come in with, with so many different identities and to be Jewish and disabled. Um, during this time is something that we talk about a lot at respectability. We talk about what does that what does that mean and how can we support each other in the community? So Judith, I, I have a question for you. And um the I have actually several questions. One is as I'm a parent myself and I've I've worn that advocacy hat and I've worn that <laughs> Um, I don't get it. Why are you doing this? Why are you not allowing my child to? Um, and and Leah, Leah just that's where she's coming from, such passion and such caring. And I was just curious how that felt for you um, to experience that in the film. And then the film also um, talks about, the important about really important topics in the disability community is and and one of those is the detriment of institutions so why was that important do you feel that the film explores these topics your, your whoops i'll answer your first question um 
uh, I want to go back to actually the casting process and talking about the mom. And we saw a, a number of extraordinary actresses. And it was actually watching those auditions that really, you know, had me remembering um, exactly what it feels like when your child's picture is not up on the wall at school in a full inclusion classroom, right? Like, and, and you know, all of these, there's the microaggressions and, and macroaggressions that we as parents um, experience on behalf of our kids and with our kids. So um, it was, you know, it was, it took me down memory lane a little bit, certainly um, in thinking about that and how important it is to have visibility for your child. So, and that leads to the other question that you asked, which was um, about uh, one of the themes, which was around the detriment of institutions. So, so look, they, we've come very far and there aren't institutions anymore. There are very few institutions and um, the, the film centers on a profoundly autistic young woman, right? A profoundly disabled um, young woman. And having visibility for everybody, there is visibility now for, um, for like mild to moderate disabilities, but there's still a lot of um, segregation into cohorts um, in all communities of people with profound disabilities. And if, we, if they don't have that, disabil that, that visibility, if they aren't visible to the community, um, we never really have inclusion, right? We never really meet that standard. So uh, we, we got it that, that um, institutions and making people invisible and putting, we, we've got that, we've uh, understood that and we've processed it. But I don't think we've fully processed what does it mean to really include everybody and not have this, this cohort that comes in for 15 minutes and <laughs> says hi to everybody and then leaves. So um, it's, it's not a criticism of our community. It is a, a kind of a call to action for all communities and um, leaders in the disability community to uh, that we need a stronger call for equity, especially for people with profound disabilities. And I really loved personally that Allison uh, brought this particular story that she chose this as her first narrative film to tell the story uh, that is very rarely told. I, I can't, you can count on one hand um, the number of films that have been made about people with profound disabilities, so. Definitely heard on that. Thank you. And thank you for your advocacy and your work. Thank you. I'd like to kind of uplift kind of the second part, maybe Allison, you could kind of touch on it, you know, that you know, it covers so many different important topics, specifically, you know, institutions um, and such. And so, um, you know, what made you want to add that part into the film of, of you know, the, that, that there was a conversation about being in an institution? Um, I, I just, I think that I know that, you know, if my mom was here, she would talk about how disability inclusion has come a long way, but it wasn't always an inclusive space, whether it be in the Jewish world or non-Jewish world for people with disabilities, but more specifically people with profoundly disabled um, disabilities, people who are profoundly disabled. And when my mom had my sister, um, if you ask her so many of the comments that she received from the community, even honestly, people in our family was um, actually, she told me the story when I was home for the last screening, we had that someone in our family, when my mom had my sister, they said to my mom that Becky was going to be a monkey on her back and that she should just be institutionalized. So this is what people said 20 plus years ago. And my mother being the amazing human that she is, um, said, no, <laughs> this is my daughter and we are going to include her and she is not going to be institutionalized. And I mean, my sister, you know, for me, and that's why growing up with Becky, like it was just normal life for me. I just saw disability as normal because I was born into it and there was no other option. It was just Becky was my sister. And like, Anyway, to piggyback, to, to, to circle back to what you said, I included the institution part, I think, because that was how people for so long perceived what should be done specifically for profoundly disabled people. But I wanted to show the reality that that's doesn't, that that's, 
not the way that you should go and that you can, people with disabilities and profound disabilities can live beautiful, full lives. And, and you kind of see the dichotomy of that in 13. Great. I have another question for you, Allison. Um, and, you know, my question is what's next for 13? And <laughs> I wanted to kind of point out, we have a, a question also in the Q&A of how can I see the film? Can I show it to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right now we're doing, um, we're hosting private screenings. Uh, so actually the next private screening will be in Israel in two weeks, if anyone is uh, joining us from Israel. <laughs> um, and uh, where I'm going to do a private screening with my family and friends, but then uh, we're hoping to do another private screening in April for Sinai Temple uh, here in Los Angeles. That's where we actually filmed the synagogue exterior uh, interiors that you see and the exterior is from Sinai Temple here in LA. Um, we're doing the festival circuit. And so the hope is that through the festival circuit, we will be picked up for wider distribution, but um, to be determined on, on you know, what's, what's next for 13. <laughs> I get it. It's always a little bit of uncertainty. Yeah. <laughs> Growing pains. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I want to invite our members of the audience to ask questions of our wonderful panel. Um, just put drop your questions in the Q&A box. And uh, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I'd like to ask a question for all three of you. And that is, what do you hope viewers, Jewish or not Jewish, disabled or not disabled, what do you hope viewers will take away from watching 13? You guys want me to go first or you want to go first? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'll start off just by saying that uh, when I was growing up, I very often did not feel seen or understood. Um, I felt like an outsider in the world uh, because I'm Jewish and the product of divorced parents and have a profoundly disabled sister. And honestly, in the Jewish world, because of those latter reasons. Um, and, you know, when you're growing up, you're, you're, you're seeking understanding, you're seeking to feel, you, you want to feel not alone, but I never saw, I never saw television or movies that made me feel seen and not alone. And so I became a journalist first and through my work as a journalist and now a filmmaker, I think what I'm trying to do is, um, is help or allow people with disabilities and their families and people, um, Jewish people to feel seen, to feel less alone in this world. Um, and I think for everyone else, it's, I hope it's a learning experience for them to understand these two communities a little bit better. Um, and especially with what we're experiencing now in the world, I hope that 13 allows people to see the beauty of Jewish life um, and, in, and how inclusion does not take away from tradition, but it actually adds to it. And something I often say with, I've said this since I was began journalism, um, but I hope that even if it's just changing one heart and one mind, like I hope that that's the effect 13 has. So. Thank you. Okay, I, hey, Cal, you you said it all. She she did such a beautiful job. I'm not sure that there's uh, a, a lot left to say, but uh, I I I hope that I hope that people um, are able to identify with each one of the the three main characters in the film and how um, how both ability and disability affect them and how it, it drives them and animates who they are. Um, and I, I think that there is just a really wonderful opportunity with each of those characters to really empathize and understand. Um, I, don't, I don't wanna give too much away, but there's a character who definitely has um, a very important journey in the film that um, I hope people center on that because it's, it's really um, David Pevsner, well, Everybody was wonderful. I'm not, see, Allison, I'm I'm can't be trusted. She's like the Tom Holland of this press tour. Or not press tour. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh. Naomi, what do you hope people take away from your 
from your performance and from the film? Um, I really hope people like, like see like that they have not just an open mind after seeing the movie, but I hope they walk away knowing that they saw a, a story, uh, like a, a story of told by Jewish people about Jewish people. That's not just like, you know, a story that we so, I feel like we so often see with the Holocaust and like, like Jewish tragedy, where it's like a Jewish like celebration and Jewish milestones and also like a profoundly disabled Jewish person having like a hugely important milestone. Wow, Jewish pride and Jewish joy. Yeah. I wanna, if you don't mind, if I just piggyback off what uh, Naomi said, we did cast completely authentically for this film. It was really important to us. So um, every Jewish role was played by a Jewish actor. And then obviously the role inspired by Becky was played by Naomi. So that was a, a huge, um, very, very important for us, so. Yep, authentic casting, um, you know, across the board is is a really important topic, and I'm very glad that um, this is the case of, that we're able to showcase here. And we have a lot of questions coming in the Q and A, um, so I hope we'll be able to get to to um, to all of them. Um, so first for um, Naomi, it's it's a comment um, from Hunter Trost, just saying I want to say congratulations. And I'm super excited about getting to see the film and how you brought the story to life. And then a question for you from Marla Bronstein is, do you prefer stage or film performance better? And what other kinds of roles are you interested in doing in the future? Um, well, I started out um, on stage, um, but I think doing like there's, it's a little bit of both. It like depends on like the situation. And so with with stage, you know, you're you're in front of people, but you kind of only get one shot. And if you mess up, you have to like keep going and find a way. And it's really fun to do that. But it's also like there are times like in your head, like, is this okay? Is this okay? Is this okay? Is is this a train wreck about to go down? And then in in film, you know, you have the benefit of like multiple takes. Or if if but if you're on a time crunch, it, it's like a TV show. It's like okay, really don't mess this up. <laughs> but it's also like, if you mess up, it's fine. We'll do another one. But it's also like, don't mess this up. Um, as for what roles I'd love to play, um, I mean, I would love to be able to play a role, I think, maybe like, I don't know why, a slasher film? That's like where I'm like the the final girl and like who like it I don't even it doesn't even have to be someone who's disabled or Jewish like I would just do it um like final girl which is sort of being like surviving um and and thriving and having and I would also love to have like a role where like I get to like kind of be cool because I feel like I, not that I don't love playing like the the nerdy kind of kind of girl, but I feel like it would be awesome to like be someone who's like cool and yeah. I love that one thing that I was kind of picking up on was that you also want to play characters that aren't you know autistic or disabled, and I think that that's really important uh, for actors to be able to do um, and such and you know, to be the final, the final girl left in a slasher film, you know, the survivor. Um, I, 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 I can see that um, and such. This next question, I'm actually going to take um, and ask my co-moderator, Shelly, um, if she wants to um, answer this. This question came in from Madeline Hutchins. And the question is, are there still Jewish communities that don't have inclusive practices around life cycle events? Great question. <laughs> so my my work has been centered uh, originally in the Jewish community. I started working in the community 20, almost 23 years ago. And Maddie, to answer your question, things are things have changed dramatically, positively 
and um, there's a lot more engagement. You know, we tend to think of life cycle events as bar and bat mitzvah. It's, and that it's really, it's really changed in so many ways. Children who have any kind of diagnosis, um, of course, can and do celebrate that, celebrate that coming of age in a ceremony. Most often, um, and I say this as a former tutor as well, so I tutored for about that long, and I got to work with so many um, kids, and a lot of times, um, I think I think that communities are learning that in teaching children, all children, to get to know the child, and to make sure then to work with them and with the parents of the child to make sure that that ceremony is is reflective and the study is reflective of the child of the kids strengths and interests and talents so that has really changed so much um i think that the inclusive practices around life cycle events really do depend though on the community but as a whole i would say things are much different than ever before and it's not just about inclusion, it's about belonging. And that is, you know, that is certainly, um, as we ascribe to being created, all of us, but Salam Elohim and the divine image of God, then it is really incumbent on our institutions and organizations to work together to create pathways to those life cycle events. So. Thank you. Did any of our panelists wanted to add to that topic? No, all right. no worries. We have a lot of other questions. Um, so this was um, uh, um, an anonymous attendee asked a question. I believe I believe she's asking specifically to you, Allison, about your sister. Um, is the young woman featured in the film still involved in a Jewish community? Uh, yes, I mean, my sister was actually at the JCC on uh, last week, last Thursday, when we screened, uh, the, uh, we did a private screening for 13 um, for the first time. And and yes, yeah, so Becky and my mom were there and my whole family. And, and so, yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> and then this is a question for all of you or any of you. Were there any guiding Jewish values that were instructive for you all as creatives in this filmmaking process? You guys want to answer first? <laughs> it's a thinking question for sure. You take it. What? Um, did I? Do you want to answer or? I'll let you guys go first. I'm still thinking about my answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I really, from my own perspective, I don't know if we will call it a Jewish value, but I really wanted authenticity. So, you know, like making sure that, that any of the ritual objects were real ritual objects um, that people wore kipot when they were in the sanctuary um, or near the Aram Kodesh and that sort of thing. And that we proceeded respectfully um, in the space at Sinai was really important to me. Um, for me, I think it was just, um, I don't know why the, one of the 10 commandments that came up was like, don't lie. And I guess like being like, when you're acting, it's like, don't like, don't be like, like be honest in your acting. Um, and like, draw from like a truth that you have and sort of like that I guess yeah um for me I don't think it's always a conscious thing but you know I grew up in a very uh, proud Jewish home and I think so much of my life has been influenced by that reality and so um so many of the actions that I take, whether it's conscious or not, I think is because of the fact that 
I grew up in that sort of in that environment. And so, um, and so, yeah, and, and just piggybacking off what Judith said, I think we were very, we were very particular and careful in the way that we, when we were filming in order to be respectful of, of the space we, we were in. Um, but it also had to do with language when it came to uh, Judaism and Jewish life and disability. Um, we made sure our cast and crew were had sheets that explained disability language um, and and yeah, and so people when they were on set, we wanted to have the most inclusive set possible and also to educate educate in the process. And so that was something else that we did. If I may, I would also add, you know, that Judaism values education and teaching others, you know, that that's a huge value. And I think that in the creation of this film, you know, you'll hopefully be able to educate others, Jews and non-Jews, disabled and non-disabled individuals, um, and then, you know, kind of teaching the next generation. Uh, I really liked how there was a question of, so what what is life like now? Um, and, you know, as Shelly mentioned, there, there's, still, there's still a lot of hurdles out there, unfortunately, um, but the importance of kind of teaching folks that may have more access now that, hey, 20 years ago, it was even that much harder. Um, and for us to be able to be thankful of individuals who kind of fought the fight then. So there's less of a fight for inclusion now, even though there is still kind of the hurdles that that you explore in there. Let's see another question. This is from Zachary Damon. Do any of you have a moment during filming that surprised you? If so, what and why? Um, there's just a, a, a very beautiful moment of um, that I just didn't uh, anticipate of Allison watching the the uh, shooting of the final scene of the film and it was it was just sort of like this beautiful full circle moment watching her watch both her life and her creation at the same time because the film is is a, a creation of hers it's an artistic creation of hers but the moment is from her life um, and it was very moving and do you remember what you did you you came in and you she comforted Allison. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Um, I mean, to be honest, this was uh, my first narrative film. So the whole thing <laughs> was, <laughs> um, it was exciting. It was new. And um yeah, I, I just I when I look back on the experience of filming, it was it was I can honestly say that it was one of the most treasured parts of my life. It was just such a rewarding experience to write something and then create that in, you know, in in the vision that I had hoped for and in honor of the two most important people in my life, which is my mom and my sister. So, um, you know, I, I've always been trying to sort of give back to my mom and my sister because they have been so influential in, in everything that I've ever done. And I feel like I'd be nothing without them. Um, and so this was sort of a, being able to create 13 as my, as you know, the first narrative film my first narrative film, my company's first um, narrative film, it was just, uh, it's overwhelming the joy that it, that it gives me, so. It's so nice to see how all three of you are very much personally invested um, in the film, not just in succeeding, but in its message and such. Um, so we do have some questions about, can we show it at my synagogue? Um, and, and, and other things like that. And people are asking, you know, is there contact information that can be shared? I don't know if there's any sort of bird mine um, information that you wanna share. Like if people wanna bring you for a private screening now, like how can, how, how can people reach out and contact you for that? 
Yeah. So you can, um, well, also, if you want to, you know, look up Birdmine, we're on, um, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, uh, Birdmine Stories. And you can email me at Allison with two L's at birdmine.com. Um, and just, you know, tell me in the subject line, you know, uh, private screening, um, right in the subject line, private screening. And um, 13 also has an Instagram page that you can follow. We post updates there as we, you know, we'll, we'll probably post about this webinar, you know, after it's over. So, because <laughs> um, we're very appreciative. Thank you, Respectability, for for hosting us. This was this is really wonderful. And we're really honored to be to be part of this. Yes, we are honored as well. So. We, we, we constantly have more questions coming in, which is like, which is great. And we still have about 10 more minutes. Um, um, uh, Allison, another question for you. Um, what else are you working on? And are, are these films, you know, are they also based on Jewish themes or what other types of topics are you going to focus on? So uh, we also have, um, so my business partner is Cody, uh, Cody Leibowitz. I think he's on this, uh, he's on this webinar watching us right now. He and I started Birdmine together and uh, our first film actually, um, and it's funny because 13 was our second film, but it's done, but it's also disability focused. Oh, did I freeze? Yes, you froze for a moment. If you want, you were just you were just talking about your first film and when you. Froze. Oh, okay. I'm so I'm sorry. I don't I don't know why that happened. But um, so our first film is a is a, a 90 minute documentary, and it's about it's disability focused, and we're in post production right now for this uh, film. It's called Meandering Scars, and it's about a woman who was actually paralyzed in a domestic violence incident. She spent the better part of two decades with suicidal ideation and depression. And then in 2019, she discovered a nonprofit that helps people with disabilities compete in obstacle course racing. So I'm sure, I don't know if any of you have heard of the Spartan races of the world, Tough Mudder. So the subject of our film started participating in these races and really fell in love being able to challenge herself physically really helped her mentally. So then she decided to, uh, she wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, <laughs> which is the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. Um, to raise awareness about uh, suicide and mental health struggles in the disability community. And so we followed her for two years leading up to the climb. We followed her up the mountain. We followed her afterwards. And so this is in post-production. This is our next film um, that we hope that will hopefully be done this year. And then we're also uh, both in the process of writing um, some new narrative uh, films. And my next narrative film, I Broke Story with Judith, actually. And um, it's uh, it's actually inspired. See, I have a lot of a lot of things happened in my life, you guys. So you know, I write a lot of things inspired by things that have happened to me. But it's um it's inspired by my relationship. My father is Israeli, and it's inspired by that relationship and um, uh, what happened on October seventh in Israel. And so um, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the next scripts that I'm writing. And uh, Naomi, I know. Um, you typically do films with the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Um, so Naomi and Judith, are we are we going to see another one from you this May? Yes, <laughs> yes, but we can't we, we can't uh, reveal any. But yeah, we will be we will be participating. Um, and Naomi's also Naomi's. A, do you want to talk about the road? Oh, um, I'm also a member of the Road Theater Company here in Los Angeles, and I'm going to be in the the next play they're doing called singularities and i'm really excited about it when when is that play going to be when? um end of may early june not to quote peter from hansen in any way but um uh sorry the, can you tell i'm a theater kid <laughs> um uh yeah yeah excellent and then i know we might have some filmmakers or aspiring filmmakers on here as well um, Naomi, I don't know if you want to share a little bit more about, you know, your experience with the film challenge, because I believe it is still open for folks to register if they want to do their own films. I know you can't share about what your project is, but, you know, about the overall, you know, experience. <laughs> so it's a really fun experience. 
it's a stressful experience, but again, it's a fun experience. Um, so you have to sort of film the, you have, it's a, the maximum, uh, run time for, uh, a film to submit is um five minutes and you have to shoot the film in five days so like that's that's like shooting and then editing yeah and then right it's 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 a time crunch <laughs> it's a time crunch adventure but it's really it's really fun and anybody can do it the thing that's great about the film challenge is we all have these now yeah. And anybody can make a film in cinematic mode. And if there's anyone in the audience who is considering making a disability film challenge film, we would highly encourage you to do, do so. Um, disability stories need to come from the disability community. And um, it just does not take much to use that phone and make a film. Just remember, just to have a beginning, a middle and an end. And um, this year's theme is is buddy movies. What? You know, we have quite a few respectability lab alumni that actively uh, create films as well. So it's always fun to see what new content comes out. Um, we have a lot of mazel tovs and congratulations in the Q&A. Uh, Rena Strober says mazel tov to everyone. This set was the safest, most sacred set I've ever been on. The respect for the story and for Judaism brought us so much closer to the story. And Robert Sherwood says, no question, just to say how proud I am of you, Naomi and Judith, and how much I'm enjoying all of this panel discussion. So lots of thanks from members of the audience. I know it, it can be hard on Zoom where you're not seeing them and such. So wanted to make sure that you're getting the opportunity to, to hear that a lot of folks are saying thank you and how much they're enjoying it. Um, before I pass it off to Shelly to close us up and you know, share some other upcoming things. Um, uh, are there any last minute remarks that from any of our panelists, anything else you are burning to share? Just a, a huge thank you for, for having us. I know Allison feels the same way and um, letting us share the story with the community and um, look, looking forward to everyone being able to see it. I'm just uh, really grateful to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Shelly and Lauren, for putting this together. And thank you for everyone who joined us today to hear a little bit about 13. And I'm just super excited for everyone to see it and for 13 to be out in the world. So thanks again. Well, we want to thank you so much. Uh, we, we, we started talking about this webinar a few months ago. And I'm just so happy that we were able to collaborate, which is really our what we do at Respectability all the time. We want to elevate all the remarkable work that's happening in, in film, in policy, in leadership, and in faith, inclusion, and belonging. So thank you so much, um, Yashar Koach, and, and wishing you just all the success in the world. So this actually, it is February 28th, this concludes our series that Respectability has done this month during Jewish Disability Awareness Acceptance and Inclusion Month. And we've had uh, four amazing webinars this month and they can be found at uh, respectability pa events page, past events. It's at www.respectability.org. And then uh, it'll take you right to the to the screen where you'll find all the past events. You'll be able to watch, the, watch all of those. Coming up in March, we're really excited to uh, present a webinar focused on resilience, uh, focused on trauma and PTSD and resilience and hope. And our speaker is John Kiesler from University of Indiana, who is uh, such a, a remarkable speaker. And that is part of our film series with the American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, Religion and Spirituality Interest Network. So very excited and looking forward to that. 
And um, Lauren, thank you so much. And thanks to Eric and Ashley and our team at Respectability for all the work, all the support. Uh, I also want to thank my my partner, my partner in faith, inclusion, and belonging, Reverend Ben Bond, who's the other half of our work. So with all that, it's been it's been a great experience today. Thank you all so much and enjoy the rest of your day.